behind the ordinary objects which surround us in our day-to-day -day lives lies something extraordinary. Incredible stories of ingenious solutions to problems most of us never knew existed. So what mysteries are concealed in everyday things we take for granted? Internet cable, the tower crane, pencils, water supply, and toothpaste. Five ordinary things, five extraordinary stories. Now revealed as we go behind the scenes, inside the machines to find out how do they do it. The internet can fire information around the world at the touch of a button. To find out how, we've come to the historic port of Calais in France. From the outside, she looks like any other cargo vessel. But then you notice the curious cargo she's taking on board. What appears to be a thick garden hose is snaking its way onto the loading bay at the stern. Strange enough, but stranger still, the hose seems to go on and on and on. It's an incredibly compact, high-tech, underwater cable designed to carry an extraordinary volume of digital data. How long is it? It's a staggering 4,000 kilometers long. The digital revolution has transformed the world thanks to mile upon mile of undersea cable. It carries around 80% of all phone, fax and data transmissions. Without cable, the modern world would grind to a halt. Most of the world's undersea cable begins life here, in a plant run by the Anglo-French cable venture, Alcatel. Manufacturing the cable is an intricate and labor-intensive business. The men on this shop floor have the delicacy of touch and eye for detail of surgeons. fiber is incredibly thin, just the width of a human hair. It's designed to carry pulses of light from a laser. But even optic fiber can only carry a limited amount of digital data. So Alcatel weaves the fibers together into an enormous piece of glass rope. The fiber rope is fragile yet the conditions it will face are extremely hostile. So that means wrapping it in a protective coating. And here it is. It looks like ribbon, but it's made of high-grade steel. The steel threads its way through a complex array of pulleys some 15 meters long. It's an endless switchback designed to keep the ribbon perfectly aligned. As the steel and fiber bundle comes together, something remarkable happens. Miniature rollers squeeze the steel around the fiber to create the tube. A tiny weld seals the join, and the undersea cable is born. After wrapping in a waterproof plastic covering, the cable will be ready for laying. 
back on board, the cable is coming on at a rate of 100 meters per minute. The operation needs constant monitoring. The cable is stored here below deck. Two giant tanks, seven meters deep and 19 meters across, hold 2,000 kilometers of cable apiece. How the cable is stored is vital to the operation. Specialist crews carefully coil the cable into place. Their aim? To make maximum use of the available space and keep the fiber optic in one piece. The men work in shifts, each taking a turn to act as ringmaster, while the rest prod and push the cable tight with wedges. How do they do it? On board, there's more excitement. The crew is loading aboard a series of torpedo-like objects. They're called repeaters, and they are a vital component of the internet cable beneath the sea. Even with an electrical charge running through it, transatlantic internet cable cannot maintain the laser light signal at constant strength over such a huge distance. So, along every 50 kilometers of cable, a repeater is spliced in to provide a boost. The loading operation may appear relaxed, but it isn't. The crewmaster controls it with all the authority and subtlety of an orchestra conductor. Her team watches her intently. No words are spoken. Each repeater weighs half a ton. Damage it and the cost of repair and time delay is enormous. Loading the amplifiers and cable is painstaking work. But deploying it under the sea is even more so. How I describe my job to people at home, the analogy I use is if you're in a plane flying over the Alps, say it's 6,000 metres above them, and we have this string, this cable out the back of the plane, and we have to fill the contours of the Alps as we progress across the sea, you know, say from UK to America. To lay the cable with such awesome precision needs some very special technology. The ship's bridge looks a bit like the Starship Enterprise. It's quiet enough now, but when this vessel pulls out to sea, the pressure on the crew is relentless. The ship is custom built and designed to travel at a speed of just half a mile an hour, resisting tide and wind to stay on course using so-called dynamic positioning propellers mounted around the hull. Soon, the ship will slip anchor and head off on its epic voyage, inching its way across the surface of the sea. It's strange to think that so much effort on such a grand scale is devoted to something the size of a human hair. But optic fiber allows the modern world to talk to itself. Global communication today hangs by a thread literally. Five ordinary objects, five extraordinary stories. Coming up, they dominate the skies of every city in the world, moving multi-ton payloads with pinpoint precision. So how do they build them? And why don't they fall down? The secrets behind tower cranes, next on how do they do it.
This may seem like an odd choice of career. The job is often lonely. The hours are long. The space is cramped. And it's hell when you need the loo. But for these trainees, operating a tower crane is their passport to cool. Go to any city and you can see them dominating the skyline. Giant tower cranes. Cranes can reach over 70 meters in height and can lift up to 10 tons. So how do they erect these leviathans? How long does it take? And why don't they fall down? German crane giant Liebherr has been building monster cranes for nearly 60 years. The scale of their plant is huge. The product they make is no less awesome. 